Bob Danzelow is with us, the captain of the Ragosa Lobster Boat. Captain Bob here this morning. Thanks for being here so early. Yeah, it's great to be here, Michael. Now, you come out of the, uh, right at the Nanantum Hotel. Exactly right. With, a, with an authentic lobster boat, mm-hmm. the Ragosa. Absolutely. And normal people can come, climb on board, and you're going to actually go out and give them the lobstering experience. Exactly right. We try to, we try to give them a little bit of a coastal scenic tour up there. You know, we always go up towards uh, Walker's Point because it's such a beautiful spot. People well, you just heard the pictures. president talking about his boat. Have okay. there been occasions when you've been out on the Ragosa where you would have seen the president come many, by on Fidelity? Many times. Really? Many times. And he's always, he's always so wonderful. He usually slips the boat a little closer to the Ragosa just to wave to people. Does he really? Can see him. It's really, really a wonderful thing. He's been doing that for years. That's nice. That must be yeah. a big thrill for the folks on board. It really is. And seeing the Secret Service people with him also. It's kind of fun. It's a big, kind of like a little caravan that goes down the river. That's a, you know that Fidelity is a big speedboat. It's a fast boat. And and behind it, believe it or not, I don't know if people realize this when he goes out on the boat that it's like a black Zodiac looking boat. Correct. Goes alongside for security. Yep, absolutely. He has some people on board with him, mm-hmm. and he has a Secret Service boat that cannot actually keep up with his fountain. His, <laughs> his fountain is a seventy mile an hour boat, it's very very fast. <laughs> Sometimes he twerks it a little bit and gets out ahead of him, oh, but wow. uh, you know he he stays within the parameters of uh, you know security, but. Uh, it's great to see him. You do take, uh, in the middle of uh, the Lobster Cruise, you do go very close to their home at Walker's Point, mm-hmm. which is for, if you've never seen it on TV or been there, you're probably seeing it on camera right now. It juts out into, it's its, it's, its own little peninsula. Yes, it is. So you can take the boat right into the cove there, right along the outside. Are there any restrictions when you do that? No, we, we haven't had any. Uh, I try to be really courteous about it. Yeah. I, I try to keep quiet. Uh, we don't use any loudspeakers or any kind of you know uh, obtrusive noise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we slip in there and then slip out. Uh, but we have a small enough boat that we can do that, and I don't take much time in, in, the, in the cove to give them the privacy that they deserve. It's nice enough that they let me do it as it is. People take some pictures in that. Yeah. And then you get into the business of lobstering. Yes. Then we go out and start pulling traps and, and uh, bringing you know, the, the traps right up into the boat, let people handle the lobsters, you know, touch them, put bands on the claws, learn how to handle them safely. I mean, it's touch it, smell it, feel it. I mean, it's just like just like lobster. It's quite can... a performance that you put on. You and your assistant. It was DJ yesterday. DJ yesterday, yes. And the two of you are. It's up close and personal. So if you've seen Deadliest Catch, <laughs> it's not a, it's not that rugged. <laughs> yeah. But you get a little flavor of it. A little flavor of it. It was a little bumpy yesterday, so it was a little bit like Deadliest Catch. It's not like being out in twenty foot seas in the Bering Sea, but but the Gulf of Maine can be pretty persnickety from time to yeah. time. So we have to kind of gauge it a little bit. But, but you uh, have the winch and you pull up the, the yep. huge lobster pot, I guess it's called, yep. the big cage. And I bring the cage up with a hauler, just like the, the lobstermen do, bring it into, into the uh, boat. The only difference is uh, we do not uh, keep lobsters. We're not commercial fishermen, so we don't mm-hmm. have a commercial license. Therefore, we wouldn't resell lobsters or keep lobsters. But we certainly fish them just like the guys do. We bait traps, go out there, let the lobsters, and, and what we find, we find. It's an amazing price for this kind of experience. It lasts about 90 minutes or so, yeah, about 90 minutes, which is right. just about enough. Yeah. And you're teaching the whole time. It seems like you're. It seems like you are fascinated by that animal, the lobster. Absolutely. And the stories you tell about the, what their life is like. I mean, it's fascinating. It's an amazing animal. It's been around since the, earlier than the dinosaurs. We we have carbon fourteen, you know, uh, specimens, fossils way back. Wow. Uh, it's an amazing animal that has evolved pretty perfectly for for what it does. And to bring it into the boat and teach people about its biology, it's how its body actually operates, how they mate, how it how it reproduces, how it grows, and then uh, show them how we keep our fisheries healthy and sustainable. That's why we have such great uh, lobster population here. And then uh, something about how these guys actually make a living doing it. I mean, I'm like a... I'm like, you know, I, I'm not, it's a show for me. These guys come barreling down on traps and, you know, bang traps out 200 in the morning. I mean, it's amazing to watch them work. Are they doing multiples at a time to do yeah, that many? Yeah, well, sometimes they do. Uh, in the summertime, it's more uh, one, one trap at a time. Wow. In the wintertime, they'll go out with strings of 10 deep water, 200 feet of water. If you can imagine being <laughs> on a rolling icy deck in the middle of the winter fishing lobster. Wow. My hat, my hey, off people got to eat. <laughs> oh, they're, they're amazing guys. Like we were at Mabel's for lunch the other day, and, and they, they were having steamed lobster. I said, when was this caught? They said, this morning. Yeah, yeah, and brought right across the street, literally. Exactly right. Port Lobster's right next to Mabel's. Yeah, <laughs> you like lobster? Eating I do. Them? I do. I I don't eat it as much as you would think I would eat it. I was watching the news yesterday at the gala over at the colony after we were finished, and uh, the uh, there was big news that there were great white sharks sighted 
in Wells, and Ken Rayner tells me right here, some off Gooch's Beach. Absolutely, yeah. Have you seen one? We have. Uh, Bruce Hebert, I have not seen one personally. Bruce Hebert saw, saw one take a seal by Walker's Point. Wow, uh, he's really? a fisherman. He's out there fishing every morning, and he so they're they're here. And when there's seal population, when the water is cold and dark, uh, this is a this is a, a white uh, white sharks hunting ground. But I saw surfers. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you have a better shot of being struck by lightning than bitten by a shark. So that's what that's what the statistics say, anyway. Yeah, well, that's the, that's easy to think about, but when you're out there, yeah. But like you said yesterday, I think you said the water temperature was what. It's in the 50s. So no, but you're not going swimming you're without some swim. kind of suit. Correct. But there are beaches and people walk and that sort of exactly. thing. Exactly. And the white shark is a lone hunter mostly. And uh, they kind of look for, they are looking for seals. And the problem mostly when a white shark bites people, it's usually a mistaken identity. And usually stops. It doesn't devour the person. They bite it, realize well, that's the wrong thing, and then leave it. Unfortunately, the bite can be. That's a big bite. It can be fatal, yeah. I've seen that Shark Week on the Discovery <laughs> Channel. When they come up from the bottom and hit you, oh, ouch. That's not what eats nice. lobsters other than us? Anybody? Well, the codfish used to be the great predator of lobsters. Not anymore? Uh, not anymore. Our cod has been fished out. And the oh. supply of cod has been very, very severely diminished over the years from foreign trawlers back in the 80s and 90s, and they really haven't rebounded. So it's it's illegal to fish cod here commercially. No, cod of all things. Cod of all things, which fed millions of people at one time. Hmm. You take the um, that part of it very seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun. You're out there, uh, and you do this three or four times a day with yep, a boat. Correct. And by the way, it's an amazing price. What, it's $30 or something? $30 like for adults and 20 for uh, kids and uh, 12 and under, and I don't charge for kids under two, you know. Little bitties are usually sitting on mom's lap and, and asleep or <laughs> but, hopefully I mean, not crying. In terms of the value for that experience, if you come to town here, that's fantastic. We think so. I, I, I think it's worth it. It's, it's money, and uh, it's been successful, and I don't have any plans of raising my price. I think it's just right. Uh, how long have you been doing that? I've been running this boat since uh, since 2011. Oh, just recently. Yeah, just recently. It was it was originally owned by uh, the guy that owns Schooner Eleanor, Rich Woodman, and John Martin, who owns Pineapple Catch, owned the Ragosa at one time, and were kind of uh, absentee owners. They had crews running it, mm -hmm. and uh, at some point, they kind of just let it you know, let it go. They didn't have the time to really oversee it in any kind of hands-on operation, and and the boat really wasn't doing much. It was just starting to fade away. They had. Yeah, ran it for a couple of years since 2006, and then it just kind of plateaued off, and it was fading. And uh, and I came on the scene, and I saw it. And what did you do I before thought, that? I fell in love with it. I was a yacht captain. I ran big oh, I boats see. for wealthy people. Oh, I bet you have stories you can't tell. Yeah, a lot. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> but the stories you tell on the Ragosa are fantastic, and obviously you have a lot of life and a lot of passion. It's a performance for you. It seems like yeah, every time you're out there. And, and Michael, I appreciate you, you know, having me on to to talk a little bit about it. Oh, that's great. I'm going to be writing about it too, and uh, we'll keep in touch. And if you come to Kenny Bunkport Ragosa, you can Google it, find it very easily. Yep. And Captain Danzela himself will meet you on board.